everybody. I am your host, Betsy, and it is time for another episode of Hallmark Happenings. I hope you were all having a wonderful day and that this podcast brings some joy to your life. Today, I am going to be recapping the gem of a movie, The Baker's Son. This is the second movie in the Summer Nights lineup of 2021, and oh, it was so sweet. It was just adorable, so charming. We are going to be recapping everything about it today, and I would really love it if you would follow me on all of my social media accounts. Pretty much everything is at Hallmark Happenings Podcast, except for Twitter, which is at Podcast Hallmark, because Hallmark Happenings Podcast is too long for Twitter. <laughs> So you can find all of those links in the show notes. Be sure to give me a follow, comment, let me know what you think. Let me know if you liked The Baker's Son. I just want to hear all of your comments. And if you want to stay up to date on everything I am posting, Instagram is the best way. <laughs> just like last week, I am going to give you some updates on what is going on in the world of Hallmark Channel. So here is what is happening at Hallmark. <music> This news is for all my hearties out there. Big, big casting news. Kayla Wallace and Kevin McGarry are starring in a movie together. And if you don't know who they are by their real names, you might recognize their characters, Fiona and Mountie Nathan Grant from When Calls the Heart. Yes, they are starring in a Hallmark movie together. Now, for those of you who do not know, Kayla and Kevin are dating in real life. So, oh yeah, the chemistry is going to be so great. I think as far as When Calls the Heart goes, it looks like the character Nathan may be seeing a romantic relationship bud between himself and Faith. And a lot of people were hoping it would be Nathan and Fiona. If that does not happen, we will get a taste of that in this movie. I have no other details, but I will absolutely update you when I find out about them. In other news... The queen of Christmas movies, Lacey Chabert, is starring in a new Christmas movie this winter. Now, I know what you're thinking. Doesn't Lacey do a Christmas movie every year? Yes, yes, that's true. But this one is set in Ireland. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Ireland. The Emerald Isle. Lacey Chabert is going to be going to Ireland to do something with Christmas. <laughs> I am sorry. That was a horrible, horrible Irish accent. If, if any of my Irish listeners heard that I'm sorry if that was painful an Irish accent is really hard maybe Lacey will try to pull one off that would be funny but yes loving the trend of Hallmark filming movies in Ireland because oh it is just beautiful and so green and lush and the cliffs and the ocean and the castles so I know there was one with Merritt Patterson a year or two ago and then just this spring we had as luck would have it so please give us more Irish movies loving this Hallmark and that is what is happening in the world of Hallmark Channel. Now it is time to get to our recap of The Baker's Son. I have heard mixed reviews on The Baker's Son, but let me tell you, I personally loved it. I thought it was so, so adorable. At first, when I saw the preview for this, I was a little perplexed. I wondered what in the world are they going to do with a Hallmark movie based around bread? It was interesting, but oh, it definitely panned out. It really worked. The entire storyline, I thought, flowed very nicely. And we saw all these character story arcs come to a wonderful ending. And I feel like as far as compared to other movies, the characters were really well developed through this. It seemed like it was longer than an hour and a half movie. I feel like it was a two and a half hour movie. I know it wasn't, but it felt like it. The charm level was off the charts. I mean, first off, let's talk about the cast. Brant Doherty, he is just a dream boat. He's amazing. I love Brandt and anything he does. He was in Pretty Little Liars. He's done a couple of other Hallmark movies, but man, he, did he shine in this one. He was likable. He was funny. Then we have Eloise Mumford. She was extremely relatable. I thought her acting was spot on. She was fantastic as the best friend to Matt. Oh yeah, and uh, Brandt played Matt and Eloise played Annie. And then we had another star of the show, Maude Green, who played Nicole, the ballerina. Let's also talk about these supporting characters. They were amazing. You had Matt's dad, Jean-Pierre, and his amazing French accent. I looked up on Wikipedia. He actually speaks fluent French. So authentic French accent you were hearing there. 
And oh my gosh, Mrs. Dean's little white fluffy dog, Rudy, was probably the cutest dog I've ever seen. I hope he makes another appearance in other Hallmark Channel movies. You know, I would almost say the character that stood out the most to me was Walter, the mayor slash notary slash insurance broker. He was absolutely hilarious. I would like to make a comparison to a TV show that I really like, Gilmore Girls. The supporting characters and townspeople are just so funny and very unique and make the show what it is. And I felt like the Baker son had that quality. All of these supporting characters from Annie's best friend and her husband, Tim, to Philip, the dance choreographer, and gosh, who else? Oh, the police chief, the police officer, police chief Lyle. Everyone did such a great job, but I, I have to say I really, really enjoyed Walter slash Walt. He was so, so funny. And I really hope he makes another appearance in a Hallmark movie because he just has this hilarious quality. He reminded me of Kirk from Gilmore Girls, another reference to Gilmore Girls. So as far as the storyline goes, I thought it was unique. So you had the two best friends of Matt and Annie who have been best friends forever. And she's watching him create this new romance with the dancer Nicole and you can see she's kind of struggling with it I, I think she doesn't think anything will actually come from it in the beginning and then when she realizes that Matt actually loves Nicole it kind of hits her gosh did Eloise do a great job or what you get to see all the emotions across her face and what she was feeling and it made your heart break a little bit it really really did and Eloise plays not just the best friend but also a restaurant owner of McBride's and she is a painter on the side. She even spent some time in France studying painting. After watching this movie, I had the sudden desire to go buy a baguette and dip it in some olive oil and salt and just kind of sit and enjoy that. Did anybody else do that? Let me know if you actually went out and bought some bread after this movie. So I'm going to just kind of take everybody quickly through what happened overall in the movie. So basically... Matt and Annie are best friends, have been best friends forever, and then a ballet company comes to town. And of course, Matt falls for the beautiful ballerina, Nicole. Did anybody else catch the scene in the beginning when the bird pooped on his shoulder and she was looking at him? I just lost it. Oh, it was so nasty. Oh, but funny. It was hilarious. <laughs> Talk about a meet cute, a meet you. <laughs> for the rest of the movie, for the most part, Matt tries to win over Nicole as best he can through a series of awkward interactions and you're just like "Ooh, this this is awkward is this really going to go anywhere and then it finally does I feel like the catalyst in that was when Nicole's choreographer says you need to look for some passion I need you to bring emotional depth to your role and she is like you know what I guess I will give Matt a shot and then they have a lovely little quick romance while she's there practicing for the ballet and during this time Matt discovers that she is his inspiration to make amazing bread and newsworthy bread really the seattle news comes to town to cover the ballet the newscaster tastes the bread and boy does he like it he likes it so much that he even talks about it on the seattle nightly news which puts windward back on the map tourists are flooding in like crazy everybody wants a taste of this bread when nicole decides to leave because the ballet is finished and there really is no future ahead for her and Matt, something happens. The bread loses its magic. This is not good for the town because the town is kind of flourishing economically with all of these tourists because of Matt's bread. We have a big uh-oh moment. The whole time throughout this, Annie is just watching from the sidelines kind of painfully as she realizes that she has true feelings for Matt and that she loves him and he's busy chasing the dancer. Spoiler alert, she even ends up selling her restaurant and she plans to leave and go back to Paris. Throughout this whole courtship of Matt and Nicole, Annie decides to have a few dates with the choreographer, Philip. I guess he thinks he's a charmer. <laughs> I guess he is somewhat in a funny way. And so there's a few dates there. She decides to make Matt a little bit jealous going on these dates with him. Once Matt finds out that Annie has sold the restaurant, they have a huge, huge fight on the pier. Oh gosh, it was upsetting. It was very emotional. And you can tell these two characters have a lot of feelings for each other, whether they know what types of feelings they are. It just reaches this boiling point of this huge fight between the two. She goes home and packs and prepares to leave for Paris while Matt heads to the bakery and 
bakes and kneads that dough furiously. Ooh, he was just kneading and kneading away. The next day, the townspeople take a bite of the bread and whoa, whoa, something has happened. It is back to its delicious, delicious taste. And they realize, okay, it was Mad in Love again? What's going on? And what I thought was, well, two of the funniest scenes, in my opinion, one when Walter just lets himself into Matt's house to talk to him while he's sleeping. That was really weird and funny. And then it happens again with all the townspeople confronting Matt about his bread coming back to life. And they're all in their Pioneer Day outfits. That was one of the funniest Hallmark scenes I've ever seen. And he realizes with all the townspeople surrounding his bed that he loves Annie and she's the reason behind his bread coming back to life. In another hilarious scene that is unlike anything we've seen in a Hallmark movie, Matt leaves his house and walks to the pier to tell Annie not to get on the boat and leave to Paris. Meanwhile, walking right behind Matt are all the townspeople marching behind him and they are headed there to encourage and support him along with the Seattle News and Get Up and Go America who have come to feature the town and its miraculous bread. In a bit of a twist at the very end, we see the boat drifting away with Annie in it. And Matt is screaming, I love you, Annie, I love you. And he is about to jump in the water. Little side note, he does not know how to swim. Just as he's about to jump in, Annie says, what the heck are you doing? And he's like, what the heck are you doing? And it just this sweet moment. We see these characters kind of look at each other and they realize that they truly love each other. And just to prove it, he has Annie taste the new and improved bread as a result of Annie being Matt's inspiration. And then, of course, like any good Hallmark movie, we end with a kiss. Now it is time for our aw, that's so cute moment. Ah, you're so cute. I have to say the moment I thought that was really, really cute was when they are featuring Matt's bread for the first time on the Seattle News after the newscaster came and bought like 10 loaves of the bread. Everyone is jumping up and down. They're so excited. Annie and Matt hug and jump and they have this just like, you know, the moment where they lock eyes and it's kind of like there's something else going on there. That was it. And in the background, the townspeople are saying, we're windward, they love us. And I just thought this was a really cute moment. It's about halfway through the movie if you want to rewatch it. That's just the recap of the major moments of the movie. I also loved that they featured ballet in this. They don't really do that much at all in Hallmark movies. Maude Green, who played Nicole, is truly a ballerina. She's a ballet dancer professionally. She did an amazing job highlighting the beauty of the art form in the movie. And I really hope we see more ballet take center stage in a Hallmark movie in the future. Maybe have one just about ballet. That would be great. And in case you're wondering where they filmed this, because was it not beautiful? It was just gorgeous right there on a little island. Well, it actually was filmed on an island, Vancouver Island to be specific. Beautiful scenery, lake or ocean, um, all of the beautiful trees and then the boats, the quaint little town, the fishing town, I guess. It was really sweet. So if anybody gets an opportunity to go up to Vancouver Island, you are very lucky and I'm sure you were in for quite a treat. I want to thank you so much to everyone who joined me for live tweeting during the Baker Sun while the movie was premiering. You can join me next Saturday, June 19th for live tweeting during the new Summer Nights movie premiere of Her Pen Pal. I think you're going to love this one because more Paris, we get more Paris because there was some French stuff going on in the Baker Sun. Now we travel to Paris. Oh, who does not love a movie in Paris? I think we all do. Be on the lookout for my recap and maybe an interview with one of the stars. Hint, hint, hint. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and this recap. Let me know if you liked the movie. Comment, follow me on Instagram. I want to know. You can also subscribe to this podcast if you like it. I am now on Google Podcasts, so find me there. Until next time, have an awesome day and thank you so much for listening to Hallmark Happenings.